This must have been uh, either the end of 72 or into 73. It was a very small company when, when I started working out of a basement, and that's Keith Barr, who was the designer and engineer, and Terry Sherwood, who was his partner. Uh, they needed people to stuff circuit boards. They, they gave me a kit of, you know, thousands of this resistor and thousands of that resistor, and then I'd stuff them in with opiums and stuff like that. And then they were wave soldered and made into uh, MXR boxes. I think it was a buck a board or something like that. Uh, I basically uh, built everything they had, and they said, well, why don't you come to work for us? We, we just started a new factory, and you can be in charge of shipping and receiving. And I said, I don't know anything about that. And they said, well, we'll teach you, or you'll learn. So I did that for about a year, and uh, they said, okay, maybe you can do international sales. And I said, okay, I'll do international sales for the company. And that's how it was. I mean, that's how it was at MXR. Can you do this? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I can do that. Within that next year, I was traveling all over the world. I was you know, a 20, 22 year old kid on a gold American Express card for MXR selling these little boxes and people loved them. The, the first ad we did uh, was this uh, ad, which Keith took the picture and it's MXR Innovations, We Are Here. And this was the back cover of Rolling Stone. And We Are Here is a statement to, to the world. He's a guy that changed the music industry, changed it forever. And this is us, you know, we're, we're coming at you. And uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. And that, that was the attitude that, that our company had. Not to say boastful, but bold. You know, young guys, everybody in the company was young. It was like, we're doing things differently. You know, the box that we used, the Bud Box, was one of the things that made the product so different. Uh, because up until this time, effects pedals had been uh, so fragile and so flimsily made. And yet Keith's design was utilitarian, sounded great, but also was bulletproof. It just wouldn't break. And that whole we are here attitude is uh, part of the product. Anyway, that was the first ad. And then they were kind of like, well, what do we do now? And so I basically piped up and said, let me try, you know, and I had no experience at all. But I was reading a lot and uh, learning from my wife who was working for a design agency. I was learning from the other designers at the agency. So uh, I started brainstorming ads and brainstorming ideas. And uh, at the time, everybody else was basically doing product ads. This is not, this is a concept ad. And, you know, with concepts, I thought, uh, it's more creative, it's more clever, it looks different. It reinforced all the other stuff we were doing at the company. In every level of production, in every level of design, in every level of sales, we wanted to do things that were, that were as innovative as we possibly could. And it translated over to, all of a sudden, all of the major acts and we're using MXR paddles. The design of the logo, uh, again, I, I have to give a lot of credit to Jill, my uh, first wife. And she felt that this logo, the script logo, which is basically just letter set, she thought it was very feminine. And she encouraged me. She said, you know, really, you should, you should try to get a more masculine look for these products. And this, you can see, is a transition, uh, this catalog, because a lot of the products in it still have the script logo. And then we get to this one, which was the newest one at the time, the envelope filter. And by this time, we had started incorporating the whole new design, a much heavier, more muscular, more distinctive and uh, meaty looking logo. And then uh, from this, we basically developed all the design standards that we had in the company. And uh, we stuck with it. And I was very adamant and I fought a lot of fights to make sure that the company uh, didn't vary from this because I was convinced that, that consistency was a really important thing in projecting our image. Keith and I uh, butted heads all the time on, on ads, near fist fights over, over design issues, over graphics issues, over everything. But the thing was that what I was doing is proving successful. I learned so much in being a part of this organization. I learned to write, I learned to be creative, I learned to trust my creative instinct. That's something that, again, filtered through the whole company. People trusting their creative instinct. Sure, we had failures. Sure, we had products that didn't do as well as others. But we tried new things. Basically, any kind of technology that was new and innovative that we thought would work with a guitar or the keyboard or whatever, we used it. Learning to be creative and, and you know, that was something that I don't think I would have really gained the confidence that I have now in the things that I do now if, it, if I hadn't had that experience at MXR.